Good afternoon. I'm Teresa Wilson, Columbia City Manager, and as we did yesterday, and we'll hopefully continue to do, weather permitting, we are here with all of our partners, um, agency partners, the county, and others to continue to brief our public on our preparations for Hurricane Florence. We are hoping and praying for the best, but certainly prepared for the worst in the event that things take a turn tomorrow. Um, we want to ensure to the public that all city and county service delivery is intact and ready to go, which it is. And we know that many of our partners also have some pertinent updates for the public. So as we will continue to do, we want to give you real-time information. Also, um, recognizing the wonderful work that the state EMD is doing um, as they finish their pressers, we hope to, to bring this information to you on a live local basis as well um, with the Midlands um, impact, keeping that a priority for you. At this time, we will let Mayor Steve Benjamin give some opening comments and updates. And as we did yesterday, we'll go through updates with many of our partners who have joined us today and have follow-up question and answer. Thank you. And we'll work to keep things very concise. Uh, I'll say I, I continue to be incredibly impressed um, by our team here at the City of Columbia, our partners at Richland County, uh, incredible um, uh, education leaders who've taken things to a, like a whole nother level, recognizing that they uh, serve the needs of the entire child, entire family, uh, feeding and sheltering our citizens from here in Richland County, but also our friends from all around the state who, who, are, who are visiting us uh, in this time of, of of great need. Uh, we're going to follow the same um, protocol as, as, as yesterday. Many of you know that Hurricane Florence is currently a Cat 1 hurricane, um, still very dangerous, uh, seeing uh, the devastation that's happening on our coast right now, 75 mile per hour winds uh, moving west at 6 miles per hour, a slow moving storm, which gives us all great concern for a number of different uh, reasons. Right now it's located 35 miles um, uh, southwest of, of Wilmington, North Carolina. Um, we still expect the storm to be here uh, between Saturday and, and Sunday. Uh, we're going to get some showers tonight and some heavy winds. We all feel them outside uh, already, and we expect heavy downpours um, all day uh, tomorrow, uh, well into the night, and then again on Sunday uh, with rain uh, continuing into, into Sunday night. Uh, I will say this, and I'm going to uh, pass it on to... Uh, uh, our subject matter experts, our law enforcement officers and emergency uh, responders, I know our superintendents are going to speak on behalf of the school districts for the updates and uh, John Ando uh, from the Comet. I'm so thankful to be surrounded by my, my colleagues on, on, on city council, uh, Mr. McDowell, uh, Mr. Duval, uh, Mr. Davis, Mayor Pro Tem Devine, uh, Mr. Rickman, and of course our senior leader, um, uh, Mr. Davis. Uh, surrounded by our friends on the Richland County Council as well, Norman Jackson and, and, and Jim Manning, uh, uh, Ms. McBride, and I know um, some of our other members couldn't be here uh, out of town or attending to the needs uh, in their respective areas or at their homes. Our leaders from Richland School District 2, uh, Chairman Craig, uh, excuse me, our new chair, Chairwoman Amelia Mac Mackey, former chair, uh, Craig Plank, and I think those are the two commissioners from Richland 2. Uh, of course, our commissioners from Richland School District, District 1 are able chairwoman, uh, Cheryl Harris. And I'm not sure if Mr. Devine is here with us now. If, if Mrs. Devine is here, uh, Mayor Pro Tem, then Mr. Devine is probably with their children. Uh, so um, someone's got to take care of home, right, right, Mom? Uh, and obviously, um, uh, our superintendent is here as well, our superintendent from both, both districts. Uh, we're always uh, very happy to have the leader of the Comet uh, with us, John Ando, and uh, representing our, our robust and strong business community, Carl Blackstone, the president and CEO of the Columbia Chamber of Commerce. Um, everyone else on the program, I think you're probably going to hear from. Uh, did I miss anything or miss anyone? Um, Harry will try not to speak, but I will say Harry Tinsley, and I know that the city manager will, will reiterate, uh, uh, is, is an amazing um, uh, professional. We're so thankful to have his leadership here, and also I'm happy to have Dalton Tresman representing the office of Congressman Jim Clyburn. Um, uh, he's been present in all of our uh, uh, meetings. Uh, every day we've been meeting to, to go over the issues of the day, get an update, and make sure we're continuing to prepare uh, for this ever-changing storm. 
So thank you all for being here. Um, I think I've covered everything and, and, and everyone. Um, it, it was important for me to know that, and of course, Tiffany, thank you for being here with, with John as well, uh, because it's important that our citizens know in this time of great need that we're all working together, uh, that we're all working together in our collective interests. And when we communicate, um, it's amazing what we can get done. Uh, I believe that in, uh, in the response to Hurricane Joaquin, we responded well, we recovered well. You learn from those experiences, however, how to prepare even better. And constant communication helps us prepare uh, for whatever may come. So we're preparing and, um, uh, and we're praying. So thank you, um, Madam City Manager. And we pass it off to our police chief, Skip Holbrook. Please. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, it's a privilege to be part of this team, uh, to work with our trusted partners to keep our citizens safe. Um, we are at a high state of readiness. Um, as I mentioned yesterday, uh, we've all of our pre-storm requests have been met. Um, all, sw all sworn personnel, that's administrative personnel, um, criminal investigations division, um, everybody uh, starts on 12-hour shifts tonight. Um, we'll work closely with the Sheriff's Department on response teams, just like we did in, in, in 15. Um, again, we, we want to emphasize as this storm starts to unfold here locally, um, we ask that everyone stay off the roadway, uh, keep the roads open so we can respond to assist when necessary. And um, if you see water, don't drive through water. Um, that is a, um, just a huge risk. And um, we have barricades pre-staged, but um, there is always areas that may pop up that um, we, we may not have something pre-staged. So um, stay off the roadways and avoid hot water. Thank you. Our um, joint search and rescue teams are positioned and they're ready to go, so we're just sitting back and waiting. Um, if any of our citizens have to leave their homes and go to a shelter, I want them to be assured that they're going to go to a safe environment. We've got soldiers from the South Carolina State Guard and we'll have look, our law enforcement people will be there uh, protecting those that are in shelters. So I don't want anybody to be afraid to go to a shelter. It is a, a very safe environment. Um, I went and visited Ridgeview today. Uh, saw there, we had soldiers on duty there, you know, everybody's just sitting there waiting and, and riding the storm out. So, you know, I, I think that's very important to understand that, that we're ready, law enforcement's ready, our military here with the South Carolina State Guard is ready. We're going to protect you. We're going to protect you. If you have to go to a shelter, we're going to protect your, your home. We're going to protect your property also. This is a joint effort, and we've got a big team, and we're ready to respond. Again, um, you know, we, we work together. This is not a situation where we want to work together. We must rather be training together than working in this situation. But just want to remind everybody, just watch out for those down power lines. And um, if your lights do go out, just make sure that, you know, I keep hearing over and over people telling people to use candles. Um, that's something that we just want to shy away from. Make sure you get flashlights. Um, we are ready to respond. Uh, we'll be putting our, um, our, our tree folks um, on duty tonight at 7 o'clock. So we have the down trees. We, are, we want to make sure that um, the, the respondents can get through those roads um, if we have the down trees. Um, tomorrow we'll be putting on our um, swift water rescue um, teams to make sure that if we do have those heavy rains and, and floods that we can get to folks. So if anything occurs, um, always remember to dial 911, call 911 and so that we can come out to assist you. Uh, we just want to make sure that everybody is safe. Uh, again, we're prepared. We're working with our partners. Um, we're partnering up with uh, the police department and the sheriff department to effect those rescues. So just be vigilant and be watchful during the storm. Good afternoon. On behalf of Columbia Water, I want to just uh, let our customers know that, that we have implemented our emergency preparedness plans, um, and we're ready. We're, um, I'm really proud of our staff and the level of preparedness that we have for, for what may come in terms of heavy rainfalls and wind event. Um, our staff, supplies, and equipment have been pre-positioned, and we're going to be utilizing technology to the maximum extent possible to keep our employees safe, 
while we remotely monitor the conditions within our operating systems, our water and wastewater distribution and collection systems. Um, we're going to monitor during the storm and we're going to respond to issues as soon as it's safe to get our folks out and in the field and responding. So employee safety and, the, and caring for our staff is very important as well. Finally, I want to um, just mention if for any non-emergency related concerns or, or, or service requests, if, if our citizens will please call our customer care hotline at 803-545-3300. We will log that, that issue and respond as soon as it's safe to do so. Thank you. I also want to say from a public works standpoint that we've prepared. For the last week, we've prepared for our stormwater systems to make sure they're clean as we talked about yesterday. We, over the past few days, we've planned. We've planned our response. Now it's time to respond. So our crews are ready. They're trained and they're ready to respond in case of an emergency. I don't think we can stress safety enough. And the safety that we talk about is down power lines. Down power lines can be lapped, wrapped around a tree limb. And if the power goes out, that line may still be energized. Leave that job to the professionals. Let them take care of that. Make the call to the 545 3300 number so our staff can respond. Also, do not drive through flooded waters. We don't want anybody hurt. Thank you. Partners to comment. John, any updates? Good afternoon. Uh, first and foremost, the safety of our passengers, staff, and operators are of primary concern. With that said, as you are aware, we suspended service yesterday, September 13th at 5.30 p.m. Transit service does remain suspended until further notice. This allows us to uh, be ready to utilize our vehicles if there are any evacuation needs that occur during this emergency. We'll continue to keep the public informed through the media, through our hotline at 803-255-7118, at our website at catchthecomet.org, through social media, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, at Catch the Comet, and through our Transloc app. And we encourage um, folks to please check those regularly to know about service restoration. We'll continue to work with first responders and the officials of the City of Columbia, Richland, and Lexington counties, and we thank them for their work in this challenging environment. Good afternoon. Uh, as stated yesterday, we do um, pride ourselves in working with local uh, law enforcement, both in the City of Columbia and also um, Richland County. And uh, that being said, uh, Richland One has uh, uh, agreed to uh, provide uh, shelter service when needed uh, at Lower Richland High School and also AC Flora High School. We will be working again with law enforcement, as Sheriff Lott has stated, in terms of, of staging and staffing, making sure that, that the, those facilities uh, and that, that environment is safe and secure uh, if and when needed. I uh, also want to say thank you to, again, to the uh, administrators and teachers that have been providing meals and, and services for students uh, these last uh, few days. And uh, as the governor had indicated earlier in the week, you know, the school systems, uh, multiple school systems are closed, and that was until further notice. So we will continue to monitor the situation through the weekend and uh, through the um, uh, first of next week to see what we hear either from the governor's office or uh, how the situation evolves throughout this weekend. Thank you. As stated uh, by uh, Superintendent uh, Dr. Witherspoon, our school districts and the school districts in the Midlands continue to be under close, continue to be closed by order of the governor. Um, it's important that you stay abreast of uh, up-to-date information by following the school districts um, uh, at their various social media uh, websites or mediums, so Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course the district's web pages. Um, our maintenance staffs in Richland too have prepared our schools. Um, uh, for the storm, or if we cleared out debris uh, and any obstruction or uh, objects that may be out or loose to secure those items to make sure that they don't blow out into the street and cause any other further distractions or uh, unsafe issues. Uh, we've had a total of about 82 evacuees right now at Richview High School. Um, we will continue, the uh, Red Cross will continue to accept evacuees as long as conditions are safe 
and that they're able to um, safely get there and be uh, allowed to enter. But uh, please show up uh, if you should need uh, shelter. Uh, that location is at 48, 4801 Heart Scrabble Road. That's again 4801 Heart Scrabble Road. Uh, we continue to provide lunches for our students as well as meals for those evacuees. Uh, that are seeking shelter at, at the Ridgeview uh, location, as well as Dent Middle School for our students. So we're serving lunches at Dent Middle School and Ridgeview High School. We're also providing meals for those individuals who are in the shelter at, uh, at Ridgeview High School. We sent out about 50 backpacks. We sent our um, social workers, assisted us in getting some emergency backpack items out into some of the more re remote areas and areas where students may not have the ability to get to those locations that will provide them with additional meals and supplies to help them uh, during the storm. And again, depending on the impact of the storm over the weekend, we'll continue to monitor monitor uh, the weather uh, and listen for any updates from the governor's office regarding the closing of schools or the opening of schools. I want to take an opportunity again to also thank our, um, our Richland 2 employees, our parents, our students, our board members, and all those individuals, administrators who volunteer their time and services to come out to ensure that our students and our schools as well as our community that has evacuated to our locations are in a safe and secure environment. Uh, their spirits are up and participating, uh, interacting with them as we all prepare to deal with, uh, deal with the outcomes of the storm. Thank you. Thank you. I'd say this as, um, as we uh, wrap this up and, 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 the, um, and we're all available for, for, for questions. Uh, obviously we are, um, it's clear we're working together. I mean, we, we have robust conversations with the hospital systems all of our other service providers, homeless service providers, um, obviously Lexington Richmond 5 also uh, looped into these uh, conversations. So we're working together and we're going to continue doing so. I'm um, happy to have any, uh, any questions um, uh, that myself. Um, the um, um, So we are, the way the sheltering system works uh, per South Carolina um, protocol with through EMD, the municipalities work through the county. So we are in constant communication with Richland County and there are several additional shelters that are being stood up as we speak and will be ready as the county is um, ready to announce those. Obviously Ridgeview, as you've heard, is, is, is open. Um, as it fills up, then additional shelters will come online, such as um, AC Floor, Laura Richland, as, as they were mentioned, as big, hopefully Red Cross type ready shelters. But a lot of churches in our area have, have already volunteered their services for assistance as well. So the, the protocol we take is to um, stage sometimes, depending on what, if you remember in the flood of 2015, we have to move people quickly if there's a high water issue or rescue issue, get them moved and then get them safely moved to the shelters that the, the county makes available to us. So what can we do to reassure the Absolutely. Clint will talk to you again today and probably say what he said yesterday about our head gates. So as of uh, yesterday afternoon, we actually closed off our head gate structure. So we've, we've blocked any inflow into the canal that may be coming in from a high river level. Obviously, if we have a high intensity rainfall event within the city itself, uh, some of that drainage will go into the canal directly. Um, we're prepared for that with the outlet structures uh, to be able to, to evacuate that water from the canal system. Um, the rock dam is in place. It is a very robust solution. Um, in the event that something un unforeseen should happen, we also have temporary pumps and piping and equipment in place to be able to pump water directly from the river. So we are, we are in a, a high state of readiness and preparedness. With regard to Richland County and shelters currently open, as already been said, Ridgeview High School, Francis Burns United Methodist Church at 5616 Farrow Road is currently open and open. 
Scheduled to open at 5 p.m. this evening, Shannon Baptist Church, 5250 Forest Drive, Temple of Faith, 2850 Congaree Road in Gadsden, Trinity Church at 1501 Hallbrook Drive, Columbia, Washington Street, United Methodist Church, 1401 Washington Street, Grace United Methodist Church, 410 Harbison Boulevard, and Shandon United Methodist Church at 3407 Divine Street. And, uh, and a couple of them are pet friendly. Um, so if you want more information, you can see me after. And yeah, uh, the public information office has put this out on Facebook and, and Twitter a couple of hours ago. Thank you. All right. Any other questions? Thank you all. And, th and thank you all again for doing the important role that you do in constantly sharing information. We know sometimes it seems repetitive, but sometimes folks might not catch it. And, and, and it's important to keep pushing it out. I want to encourage everyone, let's enjoy this time we have with our families right now. Uh, we got some time off from school, some time off from work. Let's uh, cleave to each other uh, and enjoy these, these brief moments because we're going to get through this storm and we're going to go back, right back to work and back to school uh, very soon. God bless y'all. Thank y'all.